Welcome to Math is Fundamental. Today we are going to learn about the basic vocabulary that geometry is built on, and that's points, lines, and planes. We actually call these the undefined terms. Today's lesson is going to be a little different. It's going to be a lot of vocabulary, um, not as much vis visualization, um, but we are going to look at some diagrams and really focus on that main vocabulary. So we're going to start with the vocab word point, and a point indicates a location that has absolutely no size, no dimension. It's weird to think about zero dimension, but that's what we have when we have a point. Diagram would be simply a point. You know what a point looks like. And it's going to have a letter next to it, and that letter is what we use to name the point. So if I wanted to name this point, I would simply put the capital letter that's associated with that point. Our second vocabulary term is a line, and a line extends infinitely in both directions and it has arrows at the end. So it looks something like this. Now, one other note for a line is that it doesn't have any thickness, even though technically when I draw it on the paper you can see that there's a width. But in math, we don't assign any thickness or any dimensions to this line. It extends infinitely in both directions, giving it one dimension but no thickness, so it's not two dimensions. Um, and there's a couple of different ways that we can name a line. Either we can name it using points on the line. Let's say we have the points A, B, and C. We can use two of the points, only two points, and name it. So, for example, I can do A, B, or I can do B, A. But in order to indicate that it's a line, we have to use the line symbol, which is, well, looks like a line. It has two arrows on the end, and it goes right above those letters. Now, notice there was also the point C on the line. We don't have to use it. We could have. We could have done AC with our line symbol above it, or BC or CB, um, but we only want to use two points at a time. Another way we can name a line is with uh, an, if they give us a little letter at the end of the line. For example, here I've used an M. And in that case, we would write line M. So that's just another option for us if we're given that letter. Sometimes you'll only be given points on the line. Sometimes you'll be given a letter next to the line. Next vocab term is a plane, and a plane is a flat surface that extends infinitely in all dimensions, or sorry, in all directions, which is going to be a little misleading because when we see what a plane looks like on our paper, it's going to look something like this, which looks like it has edges, but we have to remember it actually goes infinitely in all directions. So some people like to draw little arrows indicating that it keeps going like this. Um, I don't think we're going to be drawing arrows in this course, or at least you're not going to see it in your textbook that we use. But sometimes you'll see arrows, even if they're not there, the plane is assumed to have um, infinite, infinite uh, length. So a plane extends infinitely in all directions. I'm not going to draw the arrows, but I just wanted you to see them in case it helps you visualize what's going on. It still has no thickness, just like the line. It has no thickness. You want to think of it infinitely thin kind of thing. Um, and it contains infinitely many lines. This is going to be two dimensions this time, kind of like a piece of paper. You can think of that as two dimensions. All right, and naming a plane, we can use any three points in the plane. For example, if we have these three points in the plane, um, but you need to make sure that when we do that, so here I'd have plane A, B, C, or you could have B, C, A, it doesn't matter the order, but you need to make sure those points do not make a straight line. You want to pick three points in the plane that don't all line up. Um, another way that you can name a plane is sometimes they will give you a little cursive letter in the corner of the plane itself. So for example here, I've used the letter R, so we can make this plane R. And it just depends on if they give you that information or not. All right, moving on past our undefined terms, which were point, line, and plane. Here we have some more terms for you. 
Uh, collinear points are points that all lie on the same line. Co means that it shares something. Linear means line. So collinear, I've got points. So if we draw a line, points x, y, and z here would all be collinear. If I had another point out here that was w, that would not be collinear with the others. And when you're naming collinear points, you just want to list them with commas in the middle. So x, y, and z would be my collinear points in this case. Coplanar points or lines are points or lines that are in the same plane. Kind of the same idea. So if I have a plane and I have some lines like this that are in the same plane, and for our diagram's sake, I'm actually going to show you what it looks like if a line is not in the plane. It'll look something like that. It goes straight through the plane. So here, let's put some points. Let's see, A, B, and C, and D, E, and we'll put F out here. All right, so here, if I wanted to list points that are all coplanar, I could list A, B, C, D, and I can even put E on there because it's technically in the plane, but F is not. But if I'm listing my lines that are coplanar, I would have AB, line AB, and line CD. And even though E is in the plane, F isn't. So that line EF would not be in the plane. It would not be coplanar with the others. Next term is a line segment. This is a little different than a line because it doesn't have any arrows. So a line segment is going to simply go between two endpoints. So if I have endpoints S and T, and I might have a point in the middle, um, it could be, I don't know, a W, for example. We want to look at naming this segment with the two endpoints. So here, I've actually created three different segments. I've created the segment ST which is the length of that segment between S and T. I've, con I've created this segment WT, which is slightly smaller, and then SW, which is even smaller than those. And if you notice the symbol I've put above those, it doesn't have any arrows because a line segment does not have any arrows. No, you know what? I'm going to put commas in between those guys. All right. Next, we're almost done. A ray is part of a line that has one endpoint, like a line segment, but it actually has an arrow. It extends infinitely in one, di or one direction. So here, I would start with an endpoint, and then my line extends infinitely in one direction. So here I could have A and B. Now, when I name this ray, it's very important because order matters. With a line or line segment, um, for example, if we go back to that last, that last example, oops, I had ST, I had SW, I could also put WS, and it would be the same as SW. But here with the ray, we have to start with the end point, A, and then do the point that goes through with the arrow because our ray symbol is going to have one arrow, but it always, always points to the right. So we want to make sure that our endpoint starts our ray when we name it, and it goes through the other. All right, and our last term is going to be opposite rays. So opposite rays are going to be two rays that go in exactly opposite directions, but share an endpoint, and, and it ends up making a line. So here, if I start with one ray and an endpoint, and then I use the same endpoint but go in the exact opposite direction, look what happens. It makes a line with a dot in the middle. So if I have A, B, and C, then our rays A, B, and A, C, are going to be our opposite rays. We always want to name both of the rays, so you're going to have two rays in this case, and you want to make sure that they really do go in opposite directions. Um, let me show you an example of rays that are not opposite rays. These rays don't go the same direction, but notice they don't make a straight line. So these would not be 
opposite rays. You want to make sure they really make that straight line. All right, and that concludes our lesson for today. Thanks for watching, and remember, math is fundamental.